Years ago, when I decided to do a project with the Carmelite nuns funded by the Templeton Foundation, uh, two of the studies were supposed to be conducted at the University of Montreal, uh, but a third one was supposed to be conducted at McGill University, at the famous Montreal Neurological Institute founded by Penfield in the late 20s. And uh, this project was supposed to involve uh, PET scanning uh, to examine what's going on with regard to a chemical messenger in the brain which is related to all sorts of functions. It's uh, called uh, serotonin. It's very much involved in mood regulation, but it's also involved in uh, various spiritual states, mystical states. So we asked their permission to use their PET scan to do this project over there, and it's been uh, absolutely rejected. And um, whereas at the University of Montreal, uh, the two projects presented were uh, welcomed. Uh, because they were, the, the, uh, at the University of Montreal, the uh, researchers thought that it was very pioneering, very uh, innovative, very new and uh, exciting, and uh, the, the questions were considered to be uh, worthy of scientific investigation. At McGill University, I've been told in later that uh, neuroscience and spirituality and religion shouldn't, do, shouldn't have anything to do, and that uh, uh, one of the members of the committee was a very famous neuroscientist over there. I, I'm not going to mention her name, but she's known all around the world. And uh, sh sh she's even studied with Penfield in the 60s, and some of the, you may, may know her. And she said, as long as I'm here, you know, on this committee, the pet working committee over there, there's never going to be any study about neuroscience and religion or spirituality in my place, you know. So that illustrates the, uh, you know, the difference of view regarding this question. So it depends, of, uh, you know, on wh where you are. But uh, in general, it's very polarized. So the, the, the reaction is that for some of the uh, uh, minority of colleagues, they think that it's very important to do this new kind of research, uh, which at the same time tackles the the, the mind body, body problem and also. Uh, it shows all the shortcomings, the limitations of the materialist view. Uh, so I would say this is, this is for a, a minority of my colleagues who dare to say that publicly. But in reality, many more people, many more colleagues send me emails or uh, have secret discussions with me saying that it's time for a major paradigm shift in neuroscience, but since we are only a minority of maverick scientists at this point, it's not possible yet to reverse the old paradigm, but uh, a lot of uh, young neuroscientists are very encouraged to go in that direction, but they're still afraid of having trouble to get research funding, to get a position at university. and. So, because uh, honestly, the, the field is still controlled by uh, the, uh, you know, the old guard. And the old guard still believes in the, uh, you know, the old doctrine that the mind is what the brain does and that you can reduce uh, all spiritual, mystical experiences to simply electrical and chemical processes in the brain. So the, there's a battle. It's, it's, it's like a, a cultural war, if you want. But we're making progress uh, slowly, uh, but I'm sure that in 10 or 20 years from now, uh, things will change dramatically, especially if we can uh, receive you know, important funding to do these type of studies. And uh, interestingly, more and more uh, private foundations are open to these questions in, in Europe and also in the United States.